Welcome folks to a different kind of game. This is definitely not a Formula 1 game, this is Need for Speed Force Unleashed. Or if you're in Europe, Need for Speed Force 2000, which let me tell you it's kind of a weird game. Let's first get in there. First of course, this, yes, believe it, this is a Need for Speed game. It is very different because, well, it's a manufacturer game, as you can see. All of it, it's even in the name, it's just about Porsche. And it was released in 2000, therefore the European name, Porsche 2000. It only reaches up to that point, of course. It is an amazingly fun game, if you ask me. I, I really like this game. And for that reason, I'm gonna show it to you here on this channel. So, what are the stuff we're doing? First of all, up here you can see Porsche Chronicle. This is not something we're gonna focus on, but you can see the history of a bunch of Porsche. Let's see the 356, we will see all of these cars, we will begin in the 50s, we will get to 2000 eventually. But for now just know that here's 356, here's a bunch of cars, here's the 911s, which you probably know fairly well. You got race cars, the 550, the 935, the 959, 911s, bunch of Porsche, bunch of Porsche, we will see all of them throughout this little series. So what is this game all about? Well, this game has two modes. First, it has evolution mode, in which is your career mode. You will race with Porsches from all eras, or Porsches, might as well call them the right name. And another career mode in the form of factory driver. This is mostly a, like, a story mode. We will tackle that later, like after this main series, which will be the evolution mode. What is the important thing about this evolution mode? Evolution mode, not mod. There are mods for this game, but I'm not going to install them. What's the big thing about this evolution mode? Well, there are about, if memory serves, I'm going to put it on screen if I'm wrong, there are 80 cars in this game that can be bought or gained. I will prefer to gain, uh, acquire them through win, to wins if possible, because the cars that I do not acquire that way will be super expensive. But there are about 80 cars I can win or buy. 
And my objective is going to be buy every single one of those cars, or at least acquire them and have them in the garage. That is my requirement for 100% completion, which is what I want to do. That and of course win every single possible event in evolution mode. Second to that will be factory driver in which I will have to acquire three cars because as you go completing it, you get three extra cars. That also I will do. So by the end of this long Porsche 2000 series, I will have 83 cars in my garage. So let's begin with evolution mode. I will be honest to you, if you ever played Gran Turismo, this game has a bit of Gran Turismo vibes in the way things go. So, we have only tournaments, we have the 356 Challenge, the 356 A Cup, the 356 B Endurance, the 2000 CC Challenge and the 911 Cup. Once you complete these 5 tournaments, you are allowed to advance to the Golden Era and you complete the tournaments in the Golden Era, you advance to the Modern Era. So as you can see, we have five challenges, but we don't have a car. We like, we only have 11,000 in our account. Let's call them credits. There are used cars, which will be an important part of this campaign, but there are no used cars out there. So instead, we go to the Porsche dealership to buy a 356. There are only two 356s, the 356C Cabriolet, as you can see it. The level of detail in this game is amazing, by the way, because you can Remove the roof, put it back up, but I want to open the door. Uh, dang it. There goes the roof again. There is an engine there, of course. Put the roof back up. Can open the door, see the interior, which is pretty detailed. And close the door. I don't. Put the roof back up. The trunk. <laughs> Come on, roof. I. I want to close the door, okay. So here's the 356 Cabriolet, and here is the 356 Coupe. What's their big difference? Well, this is a hard top, and the other one is a soft top. It's a convertible. You can compare the cars. Here is the Coupe we have right now with the Cabriolet. The big difference is that this one handles a bit better and has, yeah, just a slightly bit better handling, which means that this is the car we're gonna buy, and if you want to see more statistics about it, here it is. 790 kilos, about as heavy as a modern day Formula 1 car. 87 miles an hour, top speed. 0 to 60? Yes. This is the 50s, performance was, was, was not a big deal. Drum brakes overall. <laughs> and performance data, here is your glorious 40 bhp, 51 pounds of torque. 5,500 maximum RPM, and well, 0 to 60, yes, just a liter of displacement. So this will be our first car in this campaign, it costs 11,000, so not gonna be left with much money. Now, I need to buy this thing, the 356 Cabriolet, so we're gonna do some trickery. We are a new car, it's... I don't like the color, so... One of the things I do is, of course, paint it. I'm gonna paint it orange, not in the name of McLaren because I don't like uh, the McLaren livery. Sue me. Um, we can also add racing lines if I really so desire. A few packages, not much, and of course, I can add a racing number, number 21, which, nah, we're gonna leave it stock, kinda. What other things we can do? We can repair the cars, which, again, gonna be an important component, and not just because I'm crashing uh, my race cars. So take that away. We can be, uh, we can buy parts. We have not, not, not that one. Here, are the different parts in the car, uh, in the car, I can build flywheels, carburetors, air filters, brakes, gearboxes, tires. Not gonna do that simply because uh, I don't have money, but I'm gonna try to make this as difficult on me as possible by not buying upgrades to the car unless the championship gets too difficult for me. Remember, I have to win every race in every championship for me to qualify. Uh, 
at least to satisfy myself and continue on. So yeah, gonna limit the number of, of upgrades. Obviously we're racing in manual transmission and we're gonna go to car setup where we will be doing some modifications. First of all, minimal ride height. Um, there is a certain specific setup, which is something like this, but I'm not gonna quite use it. I want tow out, mm, a tow in. Put some front brake, and something that's pretty universal is that you minimize downforce because it doesn't really actually do anything other than slow you down or downforce and the tire pressure uh, selector is a bit wrong because it isn't tire pressure it's actually tire grip so you want to move it up to 45 move, up, move it up to 45 and if you want to adjust the balance you just reduce this a bit or increase it a bit and if you see that your car is taking off too much like flying through the skies after every jump you add rear downforce no need to add anything in the front car is as stock as it can be other than uh, suspension being modified i'm gonna Actually, gonna keep the shock stiffness in the middle. Actually, not stiffen it up. We're gonna need it. Right high, low. I'm gonna keep suspension travel in the medium. Maybe it bottoms out, but it should be fine. And toe in for stability. Even though this car, it does. This car doesn't need stability. Come on, to the left. So it turns out a bit more. And this car should carry us to the 1950 uh, 356 challenge with not much problem. A challenge for the new driver, a quick tournament showcasing Porsche's flagship sports car, the 356. Let's go around to tracks Normandy and Côte d'Azur. We will get new tracks as the years progress, but first of all, let's run these two races. Let's get in there. So this game doesn't quite handle resolution changes well. Well, my recording software actually. So I'm going to be careful when I switch um, to the race screen. So here we are. Two, in our 356 and off we go to the right you can see we have our analog displays which are the same as you can see in the dashboard just a little levels of detail that this game has this first race is always pretty easy also instead of racing with a key uh, with my keyboard and actually racing with a controller you might be asking why you don't play F1 challenge with a controller I'm just not used to it this is not exactly a simulator, so I'm actually far more comfortable racing this thing with uh, uh, with a controller. Well, I say it's not a simulator, but there we go. We got damn it. Um, I'm gonna repair that. Uh, right, only for gear. Um, I thought I could get away with not braking on that one. Definitely could. So yeah. Um, at the beginning of the game, the AIs are pretty easy, mostly because their cars are terrible. There's a few AIs that will cause some troubles. Meet your opponents at the top right of the screen. Your main rivals will be Dylan and Paris. Occasionally, Steel will try to cause some damage, but um, he's not that big of a threat. Dylan is the best driver that... I remember at least in this game the best AI driver so you gotta have to be aware of him. Here's our 356 with exaggerated roll and some damage at the front. Look at that roll! But yeah, these, the, 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 the physics in this game are pretty um, exaggerated a bit in terms of roll. Then again this is the 50s so I can expect these cars to be pretty softly sprung. So that this is an easy race. The first few championships are just very easy. It helps you get used to the game and not crash like I did at the beginning of the race. It's That was risky. We, 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 we don't talk about that. But yeah, considering these cars are so underpowered, like, you can drive pretty much full out. Also, I'm not... I, I, yeah. There were some people there Maybe you could maybe you could see them. I tried to show them to you, but um, my driving skills are unparalleled. But my viewing skills are not as good. But yeah, this is uh, this these initial races are gonna feel very long. The fastest lap I have recorded here is well, overall in my time of playing play me and my brother it's a one a, a one at 225.96 you can see it at the top right 
How we got that, I am unsure actually, but the truth is, well, uh, it was not on a 356. It was not even on a modded 356. It was on a more modern car, let me tell you that. There are some shortcuts, which at times gain you time, at other times don't. That one wouldn't gain you time because you will have to do a bit of rallying in a twisting section. Instead, on this one, you just go flat out and end up coming out of uh, the area where the shortcut meets with the main track. You come out faster, so... As in that one, you come out at, say, 150 kilometers an hour. On this one, you come out at uh, 200, something like that. Well, much, much more because, well... Let me see. Okay, I'm zooming out. What? Trying to do too much stuff at once. Having my 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 hands in the controller and the keyboard. I was trying to zoom out so you could see where the eyes are. Come on. Okay, there we go. You can see at the bottom left where the eyes are and where I am. I am the orange little speck. The other eyes are just traversing the little shortcut section. The eyes do take shortcuts. Not that it always helps them. Also, the music in this game is a banger. Hopefully, I don't get, like, some sort of silly copyright strike or something like that. I hope. But, yeah, we're coming up to the end now. Four minutes on the clock. This recording a bit more than four minutes. But, yeah, this is a really fun game. It's It doesn't look like it, but it is a very fun game. Okay, we're coming up to the line now, any moment now. Should be up here... And where is it? Okay, there it is. Here is the line. There we go. 4.45.21. Not my best time around this track, of course, because in my best times, I did not crash. I am the winner. Here are the times. These are simulated times, as you can see. They are not quite that good. Written them casually by over a minute and a half. They are the winnings, 4500 just for this race. And here are the other times that we've done. The best time uh, set into this game is a 309. The best time we've gotten is my brother with a 22596 with a 911 turbo. And here's the replay if you want to see that, but um, we're just not gonna see that. We're gonna move on. So back in the menu, and the next race will be Code the Azure, but we have some housekeeping to do. First of all, car condition went down a bit because I crashed the car. I've damaged the brakes, the suspension, the shocks, the tires, and the bodywork. It will cost me 71 credits, but let's go to advanced. Let me show you stuff. First of all, here is where you will maximize your earnings. How? Well, it has three damage. You can fix the part, which will cost me 12 credits. Or I can replace the part entirely, which will cost me 50 credits. Naturally, I will just repair the part. like. Fix part, fix part, fix part, but there are some times where actually uh, replacing the entire component will be cheaper. Like when you damage it beyond, say, 50%, at that point uh, you'd rather replace the component because it is a bit cheaper. You got to use cars, nothing yet. But the problem is that I want to buy. Not that. I want to buy this thing, the cabriolet, before heading on to, like, future uh, future endeavors. So, instead of immediately, like, going to the next race, doing my stuff, winning it, I'm going to forfeit. I'm gonna forfeit indeed. It doesn't cost me anything, because there's no, like, uh, fee to enter a race. Gonna run this again until I have 11,000 to buy the cabriolet. Of course, I'm not gonna show that to you because that's gonna be very boring. Instead, I'm just gonna gonna race this race a few uh, Normandy a few times, and that will give me enough cash to buy the cabriolet. And again, I'm just gonna skip that so you don't have to be bored by me driving the same race over and over. When I have to farm, I will just cut that part out of out of out of the recording by just not recording it. So. I will see you in a moment and then we will do code the sir. Alright, I have returned, I have farmed enough, I have farmed enough to get 14,000 credits. 
so we're gonna go into the new cars and get our uh, 356 1100 cabriolet is it actually cabriolet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. buy that 3000 credits remaining and now let's make this my car by well orange i will eventually be choosing different colors for different cars but for now orange with a red interior is my standard color so there it is 357 cabriolet but gotta make sure that i still use the coupe ferdinand because it's the one they have set up and the one that's overall better because hard top more stable definitely helps now we go to code the azure so let's head in there code the azure not 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 a lot of room Three, to like two one go off we go I tried to have both the speedometer and tachometer, like well, speedometer in analog form and in digital form, so I guess we only have the digital one. Anyway, um, <clears throat> not much room for like improvisation here on this track, Code Azure, simply because it's like fairly linear, only one place to take a shortcut and it is uh, fairly complicated and I can see that I... I might have exaggerated with the map and I'm afraid to take my hands off the, the controller because there are not that many straights in this track. There are a few, like this is a bit of a straight and the next is a bit of a straight but not enough for me to like confidently take my hand off the controller and go in there, come on turn, thank you, turn more, it understeers a bit but it will be fine, no I can get there. Okay, so we just, we'll just deal with it, come on, again the AIs are mostly slow because uh, the car is slow and uh, by this beginning races the AI doesn't really have no of the wall, okay, uh, doesn't have installed parts, there we go, that, that should be a bit better, doesn't have any like custom parts, like upgrades, I do not, but I have a brain, so I am a bit faster than the AI. They struggle a bit around corners, so by the mid-game and late-game they will have like tires and suspension, which will make them a bit faster, <clears throat> enough, enough to make uh, the Golden Era and the Modern Era far more competitive. In fact, there's a race by the end of this Classic Era that it's fairly complicated because the AIs are pretty quick and every car is in its stock form so it's not like I can modify it to be good also that car is very slow anyway here is the place where you can make a decision I'm gonna go around the outside of this uh, coastal coastal area ah dang it not sure if I damaged the car but we're gonna go down here we can go down here around the Pierre There we go, and everything else is just linear. So what can I say about the handling about this game? Um, <clears throat> at least at the beginning of the game, the cars are very soft, like, look at how much roll it has. At least the springs are, not the springs, the shocks, because that's what they're called here. They're in dampers, they're shocks. Are fairly stiff to limit a bit the roll of the car, but it, 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 they feel like jello. Of course, I could like install sway bars and modify a uh, suspension, like springs and shocks, not dampers, to improve that, make the car feel less like jello. But I'm gonna try to limit that my upgrade. Uh, I will preferably first install like <clears throat> uh, sus. Oh, that could have damaged the car a bit. Um, suspension components, tires, and after that I will go for gearbox, and only then, if I still cannot beat the AI, I will go for engine power, because um, I'd rather, no, no, I'd rather beat them in the corners, because I'm better in the corners than them. If they still pull away from me in the straights, because the track is too straight and I need some sort of extra advantage, then I will go for improved like engine components. Turn. 
Yeah, I'm just turning the steering wheel too much. Have to be a bit more careful because this thing is fairly realistic. If you completely turn the steering wheel, it will like not react as much as if you turn the steering wheel the correct amount. There we go, there's the goal. There we go. For 1681, decent lap time. Of course, could have been better. Still a full minute faster than them, although not 1 minute 30 like it was in the previous episode. In the previous episode. In the previous <clears throat> Of course, that makes me the tournament winning. And overall, in this whole thing, I made 15,000. Which we won't be seeing all of them because... I used some to, pay, uh, to buy the cabriolet. And um, well, the fastest lap time here is at 2.29.28 with a 9.35, so... <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that is the first tournament complete. Here is the 356 challenge. Times completed one, and now we move on onto the 356A Cup. A beginner level tournament an opportunity to rate a recently released 356A, the latest offering from the Stuttgart based manufacturer. That will be done in the next episode. But first, before we head off, we have to do some housekeeping. I didn't damage the car and I'm impressed at myself. So, <clears throat> it is 1956. Over here, you will always be able to see which year we're on. First of all, there are new cars. There are a whole bunch of 356s. We have. Dang it. The Cabriolet, uh, let me put it on car compare here. So, that is... <clears throat> this is the Cabriolet. Uh, 1300, so a bit more displacement. The Cabriolet. That is the Coupe. This is the 1500 Coupe, so 1.5 liter. Coupe, the only thing that changes is the engine. 1500 Super Cabriolet. 1500 Super Coupe, which I guess the engine is much better. We got to the Coupe, 5448 in acceleration and top speed. We got to the Super Coupe, it does improve. So the engine is slightly bit better. Those from 1951, 1952, 1953 is the Super Cabriolet and Super Coupe. 1300, we have the Super Cabriolet and the Super Coupe, but they are uh, 1.3 liters, so they're not that great. And then we get to the 356A, 1300 Super Cabriolet, 1300 Super Coupe, the 1956 also has the 356A, a 1.6 liter Cabriolet, Coupe, Super Cabriolet, Super Coupe, and the cars we will end up using, the Speedster and the Super Speedster. Maybe we don't end up using those because... Um, uh, where is it? Okay, okay, um, I was gonna say the Super Cabriolet and Super Coupe seem to have better acceleration and top speed, but I remember that the next challenge is with a 356A, and I of course cannot use these things because they are very slow, so we will end up using either the, speed, the Super Speedster, the 1.6 liter, or the Super Coupe, or the Super Cabriolet. Remember, I have to, be, uh, to buy every single one of these. And the Speedster and the Super Coupe look pretty similar, so I shall make my decision in the next episode. We have 1300, and these cars, they are, well, plenty expensive. 11,000, 11,000, 11,000, they are pretty expensive. 1300, so yeah, we have to find a way to make cash, so I don't have to just grind all the time. And the secret to that is here in the used car section. What is that secret? Find out in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this episode one and I hope to see you on the next one.